you know, we talk so much about autism in terms of like the social and behavioral stuff. And don't get me wrong, that's super important. But there's this whole other side to it, the physical health aspect mm -hmm. that sometimes gets like overshadowed. Yeah, absolutely. And it's crucial. It really is. And that's what's so cool about your deep dive request today. We're diving into one of those kind of overlooked areas, the connection between autism and something called uh, dyslipidemia. Definitely not something you hear about every day. Right. The article you shared, Autism and Dyslipidemia, a growing concern from Chief ABA. This is where all this fascinating information comes from, right? That's right. So before we get into the weeds, could you just break down for us what exactly is dyslipidemia? Sure. So in the most basic terms, it means you have abnormal levels of cholesterol and triglycerides in your blood. Now, I know those sound like big, scary words, but really they're just types of fats and our bodies need them to function. It's all about balance, you know. When those levels get out of whack, that's when problems can pop up. Okay, so like a seesaw. Too much weight on one side and the whole thing goes wonky. So this article, it calls dyslipidemia a growing concern for people with autism. What's the connection there? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Researchers are still trying to figure it all out, but it's probably a whole mix of things. One of the biggest links they're looking at is genetics. More and more, research is suggesting that autism and dyslipidemia could share some of the same genetic roots. So some people might be genetically predisposed to both. Exactly. It's like a double whammy. But of course, it's never as simple as just one gene. Researchers are also looking at how lifestyle factors could be involved. Like, sensor sensitivities are really common in autism, right? Right, like certain textures of food or even just how certain clothes feel. Exactly. And those sensitivities can influence what people prefer to eat, and that, in turn, might actually increase their risk of dyslipidemia. Like, if a child with autism has a really hard time with the texture of fruits or vegetables, they might not eat enough of them, and their diet ends up being higher in processed foods or unhealthy fats. It's like this domino effect. One thing influences another in ways you wouldn't expect. It makes you realize how important it is to try to address those sensory sensitivities early on. Absolutely. And then on top of that, there's the question of metabolic differences. And this is where things get really interesting. Ooh, tell me more. Well, there's some emerging research that seems to show that people with autism, their bodies might process fats differently, just at a basic metabolic level. Like some studies have shown potential differences in how the liver regulates cholesterol in people with autism. So our bodies could be literally wired a little differently, and that affects how we deal with certain nutrients. That's the idea. And it's an area where we desperately need more research. Imagine if we could really get a handle on those metabolic differences. It could revolutionize how we approach diet and therapy for individuals with autism. That's incredible. See, this is what I love about these deep dives. You uncover these connections, and it's like a light bulb moment. It makes you think about things in a whole new way. Mm -hmm. Totally. And we can't forget about another piece of this puzzle, medication. Some medications that are commonly prescribed for autism, they actually list dyslipidemia as a potential side effect. Oh, wow. That's not something that would occur to most people, but it makes perfect sense. We need to be looking at the whole picture. Exactly. Taking a holistic view means taking all of these factors into account. Genetics, lifestyle, medications, the whole shebang. It's about seeing the individual. Okay, so we've got this potentially higher risk because of genetics, lifestyle choices, maybe even differences in how our metabolism works, and then medication side effects. But what does that actually mean for someone with autism? What are the real-world implications of having dyslipidemia? That's where it gets serious. Untreated dyslipidemia, it can drastically increase the risk of really major health problems like heart disease, stroke, other cardiovascular issues. Wow, those are some serious conditions. It's not just a word. It's people's lives, their quality of life. It makes you want to shout it from the rooftops. Pay attention to this. You're preaching to the choir. And it goes beyond the physical health aspect, too, you know? Think about the emotional and mental well-being of the individual and their families. Living with a heart condition or recovering from a stroke, that brings a whole other set of challenges. We have got to be talking about these risks, raising awareness and empowering individuals with autism and their families to advocate for themselves. Absolutely. Knowledge is power. Yeah. Right? So let's talk about that. What can people do? What are some practical steps people can take if they're concerned about this connection? What can they do to minimize the risks? Yeah, it can feel kind of overwhelming when you first hear about these risks, you know. But the good news is there are things you can do, right? So where do we even start? You're right. Knowledge is power, like you said. Just mm -hmm. knowing about this is a good first step. 
But yeah, even small changes to your lifestyle can make a world of difference. Okay, so what kind of changes are we talking about? Give us the good stuff. Well, a healthy diet is always a good place to start. You know, cut back on the processed foods, sugary drinks, all that stuff, and focus more on whole foods, fruits, vegetables, lean protein, all those things your doctor's always nagging you about. The classics never go out of style, right? Yeah. But it's one thing to say, eat healthier, and a whole other thing to actually do it, especially if you're dealing with sensory sensitivities. Picky eating, which like we said earlier, can be a bigger thing with autism. Any tips for navigating that? Absolutely. It really is about finding what works for the individual. Maybe that's introducing new foods super gradually, one at a time, or playing around with different textures, temperatures, finding what works. Sometimes pairing a new food with a familiar favorite helps. And making mealtimes fun. Don't underestimate that. It takes patience and persistence, that's for sure. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And what about exercise? I'm guessing that's important, too. You got it. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Even moderate exercise a few times a week can really help those cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So no need to sign up for a marathon tomorrow. No, no, not at all. The best exercise is the kind you actually enjoy, so you'll stick with it. Could be going for walks, swimming, dancing, whatever gets you moving. And if you're working with a child with autism, think about their interests and sensory preferences. What would they enjoy? There are always ways to get creative and make it fun. That makes so much sense. And of course, regular checkups with the doctor are key, right? Absolutely. Can't stress that enough. <laughs> regular blood work can catch any potential issues early on when they're way easier to manage. Early detection is key. Now, you mentioned earlier that medication might be necessary in some cases to get dyslipidemia under control. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so sometimes medication might be recommended to really get things on track. That's definitely a conversation to have with your doctor. You know, really weigh the pros and cons. What are the potential benefits? What are the potential side effects? But remember, medication is just one tool in the toolbox. It's not a magic bullet. Right. It all comes back to that holistic approach. Exactly. Every individual is different. It's about working closely with your health care provider to come up with a plan that makes sense for you, for your specific needs and circumstances. Maybe that involves lifestyle changes. Maybe it involves medication. Maybe it's a combination of both. It's about finding the right balance. This has been so eye-opening. Before we wrap up, any final thought you want to leave our listeners with? Something to chew on? Maybe spark some further exploration? You know, it's funny. This whole thing, it really gets you thinking. Like, this connection with autism and dyslipidemia, it's important, don't get me wrong, but it's just one example, right? Makes you wonder what other physical health stuff might be connected to autism that we don't even really talk about. It's like we're just scratching the surface. Exactly. It just shows you how important this research is. We need to be looking deeper, you know, advocating for a more holistic approach to healthcare, one that really considers all the unique needs of individuals with autism throughout their entire lives. Absolutely. It's a call to action for all of us. You know, learn more, ask questions, be proactive. Well, this has been amazing. We've talked about autism and dyslipidemia, what the connection might be, the potential risks, and what people can actually do to take control of their health. But I think more than anything, what we've really highlighted here is the importance of a holistic approach, understanding that our physical health is all connected to well, everything else going on. Couldn't agree more. And I just want to reiterate that this is a journey, not a race, right? Everybody's experience with autism is different. And what works for one person might not work for another. It's all about finding what works for you or for your loved one, advocating for your needs, and building a strong support system. It makes a world of difference. Beautifully said. And remember, knowledge is power, right? The more we know about autism, about the potential health concerns, the better equipped we'll be to make good decisions. Advocate for ourselves advocate for our loved ones exactly don't be afraid to ask those questions do your research talk to people connect with others in the autism community find those support systems there's so much strength in shared experience couldn't agree more well thank you so much for taking this deep dive with us this has been incredibly insightful and to our listeners we hope this conversation has been helpful eye-opening maybe even a little inspiring maybe it sparked some curiosity and you'll go do a little more digging of your own just remember your health matters. And advocating for yourself, it's always worth it. Until next time, stay curious.